Sunderland Shrewsbury this weekend. Jackie, excited? No, never. Never excited <laughs> for the Sunderland games anymore. Surely Shrewsbury is some... Sorry to any fans of the Shrews in the house. That's an easy couple of points, isn't it? Well, you'd think so, but then we've lost to some we've lost to some pretty appalling teams this year so far. So you never know. You never know. Um, they they love that long trip up north now. It used to be a fortress, Tom, but no longer. <laughs> the fortress has fallen. Yeah. Big shout to any wrestling friends in Shrewsbury who were there live the day that Liam O'Rourke, the man who wrote Brian Pillman's book, gave me a low blow in the centre of a wrestling ring. That was a thing that happened, and if you can find it online, you win yourself ten points. It's there somewhere. I won't tell you where. Here is your wrestling news. An AEW star declines an offer from WWE. Is a popular NXT team about to turn heel? And a cancelled WWE show is returning for a one-off special. Find out what in a little bit. We've heard a few times about how WWE enjoy watching AEW as a bit like the same sort of energy that somebody will take a car for a test drive just to kind of get a vibe for what they like and what they don't and then maybe make a decision on purchase afterwards. We've heard of a few people who have been approached by WWE after appearing on AEW Dark and Will Hobbs has spoken about his instance with that, hasn't he, Jack? Yes. Um, well, he's, he's given us a bit of a, a history of his kind of run-ins with WWE generally. And then so this was on the AEW Unrestricted podcast, uh, I hasten to add at this point, and this is where this story comes from. So uh, back in 2016, Hobbs revealed that he wrestled a dark match against Baron Corbin on SmackDown and received a tryout, but was then told there was nothing for him at the time. Uh, that was in San Jose, California, he said. So just maybe 30 minutes from here, from where I, from where he's from. And he said, did that whole thing and had a tryout. The tryout was good. Well, that was a long story, but I'll give you the short story. They said, we didn't have anything for you right now. And then just years later, getting the carrot dangled in front of me again, pretty much told them, F you. Right when I appeared up on AEW, uh, hey, he, he wanted them to basically think when they saw him on TV, hey, remember me? Like, this is the guy you turned down, essentially. Uh, the way I was raised, I don't got time for that S word, um, which we can't say on this video. But I understand what he means. So he, he's had a match, or he's, he's started cropping up on AEW, and then only then are WWE more interested in him again. You would be miffed. You'd be annoyed, Tom. Yeah, it's, 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 he's going for that same sort of energy that, that an ex would have walking into a pub you know they know you'll be in dressed to the nines yeah it's yeah, that yeah. same kind of energy it's just they go hey let's take a look at what you could have won uh, I, I get it i get the frustration for because you suddenly then feel like well i wanted to go there back in the day and you weren't having it and and now yeah. i feel like you only want me there to be a, a pawn in your silly game it's That's like vibe it's like will hobbs was a skater boy and WWE said, see you later, boy. I feel like that situation is best summed up by the Avril Lavigne classic. <laughs> and now he's a superstar living on his guitar. Yeah, I think it's... You know what? I've always thought he was living on his guitar, as in he makes money playing his guitar. That's, but, then, that's... but now, but I think it's slamming on his guitar, you know? Hang on, we're going to I know, I know, it's, it changed my... And I think living on his guitar is actually a better lyric, but apparently it's slamming on his... Yeah. Unless house prices were so expensive back then that it's like, I'm just going to sleep on my guitar. <laughs> uh, okay, I've got the lyrics in front of me. Uh, yeah. Now it's... Oh, sla it is slamming on his slamming guitar. On his, it's not as good, well, Avril. Avril, it's not as good. Bad, bad times, Avril. Bad times, Avril. You, you turned on us very much like uh, a team in NXT, maybe about to do very, very soon. So we've uh, seen the beginning... Of the of two versions of the Dusty Tag Team Classic, but one team may come out on the dark side. Who are we talking about, Jack? So I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tom. When I saw this headline, this was not the team I was expecting to be the team that are possibly turning heel because it doesn't seem like that at all to me. But you never know. Uh, so Brian Alvarez has said on Wrestling Observer Live that he was told that the team of Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter are about to turn to the dark side. He said, I was told last night after Casey and Caden got their upset win in the Dusty Classic and Casey did a full cent on, like it was their new finisher. It was absolutely ridiculous, oh, Tom. stunning. Amazing yes, yes. scenes. Very unique and very impressive. And at first I thought, because you've never, because you know when you see a new movie, you think they've messed up an existing move first. You're like, oh, oh but it was fine. <laughs> um, but then Alvarez goes on to say, I was told that was supposed to be the beginning of a heel turn for that tag team. I guess... Because didn't Io Shirai get involved and take out Mercedes Martinez to help them get the upset win? But at the same time, 
nothing about that win to me screamed, oh yeah, that she's just hit a million flips. There, to, she's a baddie. They're gonna turn heels yeah. soon. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why Alvarez worded it in that way, but from watching NXT, I don't think it was that move that kind of intimated that. But oh. they did it. They did a thing backstage afterwards as, oh, as Mackenzie okay. Mitchell was talking to the camera uh, about to, to address an injury in the in the men's Dusty Classic. KC uh, and KC come charging in, swinging towels, super excited, so happy, stoked to be in the next round of the tournament, declaring they're going to win the tournament. So there's a lot of big energy there, and I feel that if we're going to see this turn, it's it could possibly be them facing off against a babyface team, maybe in the semi-finals, having a, a heated match between them and then losing and then just going bang Sancho. yeah fair enough something that, like that, that i feel like sense. there's i think there's a there's a great energy about about casey and casey and i've really enjoyed watching them slowly grow over the past few months especially on nxt but they've right, lacked right. that little bit of that, that starter cap to get them going you know yeah i know I what you like mean bit, i feel like this might be this might be the start of something special um the end of something special is uh, regarding Val Venus's Twitter account. She's yeah. On that story today. What's going on, Jack? So now this isn't something that I know too much about because it, during the whole past few months, the U.S. politics and election chatter has been so all-encompassing that it's hard. I I struggle to pick out certain things. So I don't know what a QAnon is or a QAnon. QAnon. So yes, I do kind of. It's a, it's a it's kind of a conspiracy group. Who so kinda... QAnon? The theory was that that QAnon is somebody that that is sort of behind the scenes in the government who knows uh, that there's this this big event coming that's going to change the world. They, the QAnon predicted that something big, a military coup type event, would go yeah, down yeah, yeah. at the inauguration. And then it and didn't. It didn't. And, and then there's been quite a few out. people. Yeah, there's been a lot of that. But but yeah. uh, Sean Morley has been uh, very much uh, on on this. A lot of conspiracy so, theories, a lot of QAnon related matters shared on his Twitter, and uh, not so much anymore. No, because he deleted his Twitter account. Now it seems like Sean Morley was quite deep into this sort of stuff. Uh, e wrestling news report. There were times when he posted over a hundred tweets a day. Some of them incoherent. <laughs> They've just slipped that in. It just made me laugh. That some this of them e wrestling news saying this, by the yeah. way. This is e yeah, wrestling yeah. News. Thank you. They did actually they did a very concise but, report on the, on his Twitter activity. Did they? Nice. Uh, yeah. Some of them incoherent and at all times during the day and night. Hopefully he's all right. Like his mental state. We monitored some of his tweets and there were multiple periods where he'd be up for forty eight hours straight posting nonstop. Really? Oh God, I hope he is okay. There were even some current and former wrestling superstars who were pleased with him to get the help that he seems to need if you try to view uh, his page now it says this account doesn't exist it seems like he has indeed deleted his twitter um yeah that's quite it's quite sad in a way at first i was expecting to be to for, like us to kind of take a few jabs at him and be like what a fool but now it seems like no actually he probably kind of needed help so maybe it's a good thing that he deleted his twitter to be honest tom mm. and it's a good thing that heath slater didn't punch brock lesnar Yes, it is. <laughs> because during a recent interview with Table Talk, uh, Slater, or Heath, or Heath Slater, uh, talked about the segment he had with Lesnar back in 2016, which was the, I believe, the I don't give a crap about your kids, Heath, you big bully. No, Brock didn't say that. What am I talking about? <laughs> I love the idea of Brock going, oh, yeah. you big bully. Yeah. Um, I, uh, but Heath said, I just wanted to give Brock one punch. That was it. And Heyman was like, if you hit Brock, you really have to... Oh, he says Paul. I assume he means Heyman. He could mean Triple H, I suppose. If you hit Brock, you really have to hit him. Dude, whatever. I know how to throw a punch. I'll make it look good. He says, I don't give a damn about your kids. Boom. And then he kills me. The fans would have loved it. That's all I pitched. That would have... Yeah, I agree. That would have made the segment better. It was still a great segment anyway, though, I think. There's something concerning about them saying, look, Heath, if you want to do it, like you've got to really hit him. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, that's fine. I'll hit him." And I think they just went, "You know what? We're just gonna we're gonna save Heath from himself here, uh, and we're not gonna let." Imagine that if happen. imagine if they didn't know, but Heath's actually incredible, and he'd accidentally knocked out Brock Lesnar. In the Could middle you of imagine <laughs> that would have been amazing? He'd have had a he'd have had a WrestleMania 15 match against Butterbean in no time. Uh, yes, absolutely. stunning work, stunning work. Uh, wrapping up with the return of a cancelled WWE show, one that we we haven't seen since the beginning of the pandemic. The show wrapped up and normally led to some interesting headlines and such. What's coming back for one time only, Jack? I can't believe this, but WWE backstage is coming back, and I can't believe this 
for um, one main reason, which is obviously Renee Young. Because uh, she left the company. She's obviously married to, until recently, the AW champion. <laughs> like, it just didn't seem like something that was going to happen again. But Fox Sports announced today that, spe- that a special Royal Rumble preview edition of WWE Backstage will air on FS1 at 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, January 30th, the night before the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. And it'll be hosted by Renee. It'll be hosted by Renee. Booker T will be there. Paige will be there. No mention of CM Punk, but if they're bringing Renee back for it, Mm. then, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if Punk came back for it, I suppose. Because Renee's Uh, in the same grey area as CM Punk, like a Fox employee who's doing stuff for WWE. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I just thought that maybe WWE would have asked Fox, like, can we just get someone else in maybe? But no, (laughs) it turns out, turns out no. Fox went, WWE, why have you got to go make things so complicated? (laughs) See the way you're acting like Uh, You know what? For about three stories, I've been trying to find a way to shoehorn that in and I've not been able to. (laughs) And I just had to do it there. And I'm not happy with it, to be honest. I'm not proud. No, not well, proud. well to, to quote Biffy Clyro, I'm with you. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> why have you been saying that everything's a Biffy Clyro? I've noticed this the other day, right? I got a message from someone and, and they said to me, why did Tom say cement the Shikari lyrics? And then, and then I said, oh yeah, did I not pull him up on that? And then they said, you gave a bit of a confused nod as if subconsciously I'd gone... Mm. That's not Biffy Clyro. What? So why have yeah. you? Th- can you? Can we? Can we get into this for a second, please? Well, to quote Biffy Clyro. No, don't do that. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. What's what's this then? Have I a great, con- con- have a great weekend. Love you. Bye. But I'm not going to now. I'm going to be thinking about this all the time. <laughs>